Hello and good evening. This is TV7 Israel News broadcasting to you from Jerusalem and in today's top stories. President Donald Trump hosted ambassadors of member states of the UN Security Council for a lunch meeting during which he pressed them to counter what he termed as Iran's destabilizing activities in the Middle East. Defense Minister Viktor Lieberman declares that while Israel is not interested in war with Lebanon, it is determined to prevent its northern neighbor from turning into one big factory for building accurate missiles that would threaten the security of the Jewish state. Jordan's King Abdullah and Palestinian President Mahmoud Abbas agreed to work together toward gaining international recognition for a state of Palestine and preventing other countries from recognizing Jerusalem as the capital of Israel. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu concluded a one-day visit to Moscow last night, during which he noted that his meeting with Russian President Vladimir Putin allowed him to emphasize Israel's resolve in preventing Iran's efforts to establish itself militarily in neighboring Syria, as well as its ongoing attempt to construct factories in Lebanon for the manufacturing of precision-guided weapons aimed at bolstering its Shiite proxy Hezbollah with advanced capabilities for a future confrontation with the Jewish state. Prime Minister Netanyahu also voiced his reservations regarding the nuclear agreement that was reached in 2015 between the Islamic Republic of Iran and world powers, which included the United States under the Obama administration, Russia, China, France, Britain, plus Germany. He urged the Russian leader to consider what he termed as much-needed amendments to an agreement termed the Joint Comprehensive Plan of Action that, according to the Israeli leader, does not fulfill the international demand of preventing Tehran's aspiration for going nuclear within a limited time frame. Meanwhile, a war of wars between Israel and the Iranian-backed Hezbollah in Lebanon is heating up. While Defense Minister Avigdor Lieberman said that Israel is not interested in war with Lebanon, it is determined to prevent its northern neighbor from turning into one big factory for building accurate missiles. The Israeli top defense official further issued a clear warning of Iranian figures responsible for the armament of its Lebanese proxy Hezbollah and clarified to them that from now on they are in Israel's gun sites. The comment by Lieberman came after another warning by the IDF, which published an unusual article in newspapers belonging to the Lebanese opposition, warning Hezbollah and Iran, the residents of southern Lebanon, and the international community that a future attack against Israel would lead to a dangerous flare-up. In response to the Israeli threat, Lebanese Member of Parliament from Hezbollah's political win, Haj Muhammad Ra'ad warned that Israel must avoid doing something stupid and get caught up in a war that will be destructive for it. The Iranian-backed Lebanese Member of Parliament further claimed that Hezbollah is today stronger and has the capability of destroying the Israeli army. Now to Washington, where President Donald Trump hosted ambassadors of member states of the UN Security Council for a lunch meeting during which he pressed them to counter what he termed as Iran's destabilizing activities in the Middle East, among other pressing security challenges. Today we will discuss our cooperation on a range of security challenges, including the denuking of North Korea, very importantly, countering Iran's destabilization activities in the Middle East, ending the Syrian conflict, and confronting terrorism. Earlier in the day, the U.S. administration took the ambassadors of the United Nations Security Council on a field trip to inspect what U.S. officials called remnants of Iranian missiles and other weaponry supplied to the Iranian-backed Houthi rebels in the war-torn country of Yemen, as well as an exhibit to the Holocaust Museum in Washington that showcases atrocities in Syria. Earlier today, the ambassadors viewed a display of Iranian missiles and arms that the regime has transferred to its militant allies in Yemen. And later today, uh, they're going to view Syria atrocities exhibited at the Holocaust Museum. 
So they've seen the missiles from Iran, and they're looking at some of the atrocities taking place in Syria. In response to the American organized tour and lunch meeting with President Trump, Iranian Foreign Minister Mohammad Javad Zarif wrote on his Twitter page that the field trip had been an attempt to create an Iran-phobic narrative at the United Nations Security Council through winning and dining and fake evidence. In other news, Russia concluded today a one-day peace conference in the Black Sea Resort city of Sochi, which Moscow labeled as the Syrian Congress of National Dialogue and aimed at advancing negotiations between the Syrian government and opposition on drafting a new constitution for Syria after almost seven years of war. Дорогие друзья, спасибо большое. Дорогие друзья, дорогие друзья, мы должны продолжать работать. У вас будет возможность поучаствовать в дискуссии. The conference, however, has faced a series of challenges as the event that was initially planned for two days was boycotted by most of the leadership of the Syrian opposition. In addition to that, the United States, Britain and France refused to attend the Russian brokered conference because of what they claimed was the Syrian government's refusal to properly engage. Also, this morning, the conference got off to a rocky start after some delegates of the Syrian opposition refused to leave the airport on arrival, saying they were offended by the presence of the Syrian government flag and emblem. Russian officials have complained of attempts to sabotage the conference, but the Kremlin said it was unfazed by a Syrian opposition decision to boycott the event and accused the opposition and its Western backers of trying to thwart a genuine attempt to bring an end to the bloody conflict in Syria. Now to the Jordanian capital of Oman, where Jordan's King Abdullah held a meeting with Palestinian President Mahmoud Abbas for discussions on the latest developments on Jerusalem. During their meeting, the two leaders said they would organize a summit of Arab states that would seek to unite them in bolstering the Palestinian aspiration for statehood and to protect what they said were Jerusalem Islamic characteristics. In addition to that, King Abdullah and President Abbas also agreed to work towards gaining international recognition for a state of Palestine and preventing other countries from recognizing Jerusalem as the capital of Israel. تم الاتفاق على تنسيق لاجتماع الوزارة العربية القادم والكمال العربية إضافة إلى تحرك على مستوى مجلس الأمن والجمعية العامة بهدف الحصول على اعترافات بدولة فلسطين ومنع أي دولة في العالم من نقل سفارتها إلى القدس أو الاعتراف بالقدس عاصمة الإسرائيل. Even though U.S. President Donald Trump recognized Jerusalem as Israel's capital, asserting that only through direct negotiations between Israel and the Palestinians could change the status of the city. The Palestinian leadership demand Jerusalem as the capital of their aspired state under any peace agreement, rejecting the American move as a biased decision that has deemed Washington as untrustworthy, that has ruled out its legitimacy as a mediator for peace. Thank you for joining us. You can also watch us at tv7israelnews.com or tv7.fi. For any updates from Israel and its region, visit our Facebook page at TV7 Israel News. For any comments, please send your emails to israelnews at tv7.fi. Keep praying for the peace of Israel and the peace of Jerusalem. I'm Yair Pinto. Have a good evening, and we will see you again tomorrow at the same time. In order to donate to TV7 Israel News, please follow these simple steps. 
First press the donate logo, located at the bottom left side of TV7 Israel News Facebook page, or on the donate tab at the head of the page. Then insert the amount you'd like to donate, and fill in your credit card information. Just like this. And press Review Donation and Continue. After reviewing your donation details, please press Donate to finalize your donation. That's it! Your donation is now complete, and an email with your donation details has been sent to your email address. You can also print your donation receipt by pressing the link here. Thank you for supporting TV7 Israel News.